On my birthday, I received a call saying Gabriel Owen had been kidnapped. Following the kidnapper's instructions, I braved the rain and ran into the wilderness, searching for most of the night but finding no trace of Gabriel. When I limped to the foot of the mountain, Gabriel and his friends were laughing. All right, this was just a test before our engagement. Who knows if you've been pretending these past seven years. Now you've passed the test. Later, on his birthday, I handed him an engagement invitation with my name and his archenemy's name on it. His eyes turned red as he tore the invitation into pieces, his voice trembling. Don't joke with me, please? I handed him a second one, sorry, you didn't pass my test. Ding! Wiss Novel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. When I limped to the bottom of the mountain, I vaguely saw a few sports cars parked ahead. I took a deep breath, enduring the sharp pain in my knee and ankle, and moved a few steps forward. Gabriel Owen stood out amongst the crowd, even in a simple t-shirt and jeans, exuding an intense youthful vibe. This man seemed to have been frozen in his youth, untouched by the passage of time. Ella, with her long hair cascading like a waterfall, was held by his shoulder. Gabriel. My voice finally caught their attention. Seeing my disheveled state, they burst into laughter. Gabriel, you really don't know how to cherish a beauty. Your fiancé looks terrible, ha ha ha. People from poor families sure can endure hardship, we can't compare to that. Looks like Gabriel has trained her well, she's loyal enough. Gabriel smiled faintly but frowned in displeasure when he looked at me. What was it? Did my bedraggled appearance embarrass him? It was at this moment that I fully understood how ridiculous the so-called kidnapping was. When I first received that kidnapping call in the evening, I thought it was a scam. But Gabriel's panicked voice made my heart race. Alvina! Save me! I instinctively wanted to call the police, but Gabriel seemed to read my mind. Don't call the police, listen to the kidnappers, or they'll kill me. At that time, I couldn't have imagined that Gabriel's acting would be so convincing. Oh dear, her leg is bleeding so much, will she be crippled? Gabriel, you should take her for a good checkup, don't end up marrying a cripple. Ella pushed the silent Gabriel, her voice dripping with malice. I looked at them one by one, the most dazzling and carefree heirs of the capital. Their contemptuous and disdainful smiles were particularly striking in the dark night. Are you okay? Gabriel walked up to me, towering over me. With my injured leg, I had to bend slightly, straining to look up and see his clear, pool-like eyes. Okay? A trace of sarcasm arose in my heart. He must be blind. Otherwise, he wouldn't ask such a stupid question as are you okay? Following the kidnapper's instructions, I had wandered back and forth in this wilderness for most of the night. The flashlight wasn't bright enough to illuminate the rugged mountain path. I didn't know how many times I had fallen, how much mud I had eaten, and I almost rolled down the mountain. I didn't feel it much while searching on the mountain, but now that I was calm, the injuries on my body and legs were becoming more and more painful. The pain almost made me unable to hold back the tears. I wouldn't cry in front of them. That would only make them think it was more interesting and fun. It turns out you're all right, Gabriel. My throat was so hoarse that I could barely make a sound. That was because I had called out his name countless times on the mountain. Hoarse like a duck's quack. Gabriel's friends burst into laughter again. Gabriel, where are you? Gabriel, I'm here to save you. Ella exaggeratedly mimicked my calls on the mountain, her body shaking with laughter. Gabriel gave her a look, and she awkwardly fell silent. All right, this was just a test before our engagement. Gabriel pulled me into his arms, roughly ruffling my hair to comfort me. It was like he was coaxing an obedient little dog. Who knows if your feelings for me over these seven years were real or just an act. Now you've passed the test, come on, give me a smile. The whisper in my ear tickled and made me uneasy. I gently pushed him away, feeling a bit dazed. Seven years. I used to think that waiting seven years like the protagonists in romance novels and dramas was such a long time, something that couldn't possibly happen in real life. But now that it's happened to me, it doesn't seem that hard. Just really tiring. I stared at him steadily until he started to look uneasy. There are so many people here, don't throw a tantrum. When we get back, 
I didn't wait for him to finish and turn to leave. Behind me, a few people started to jeer. Oh, Gabriel's little lapdog is angry. Don't say it like that, be careful or Gabriel will get mad. You should say Gabriel's little sweetheart is angry. Unfortunately, my leg was badly injured, and after just a few steps, Gabriel caught up and picked me up by the waist. On the way back, he drove very fast. Seeing that I remained silent, his face grew darker and darker. Something in the seat was poking me, so I reached to feel what it was. It was a lipstick, not mine, but the one Ella often used. As soon as we arrived at the Owen house, Gabriel's mom came downstairs. Alvina, where have you been playing again? The company matters aren't finished yet and you ran off? Gabriel just took over the company, there are many things he needs your help with. You. Seeing me covered in mud and limping, she froze in place. Oh dear, how did you end up like this? I told you, Gabriel loves to play because you lead him astray. What have I always told you? You need to take good care of Gabriel. I've heard these words for seven years, my ears are calloused from them. Seven years ago, when my mom suddenly collapsed while working at the Owen Company, she was later diagnosed with cancer. It was Gabriel's mom's support that sustained my mom's treatment. Although the Owen family has more money than we can spend, we don't just help anyone out of the goodness of our hearts. I heard you and my son go to the same high school and you're the top student. From now on, you'll be responsible for my son's studies. Later, I was naturally transferred to Gabriel's class and became his desk mate. Do you know how unlucky you look? When I first met Gabriel, he smiled with crescent eyes, but his words were arrogantly annoying. I am the top student. Pfft, do you know how rich I am? I am the top student. My family's company can support so many people, do you know that? I am the top student. His excessively handsome face finally showed a crack. So what if you're the top student? Can you get the top score? Gabriel seemed to find it amusing to compete with me and slowly tolerated my presence by his side every day. Over the next seven years, I dutifully fulfilled the role Gabriel's mom had assigned to me. Tutor, nanny, cleaner of messes. The whole of the capital knew that I was Gabriel's most loyal follower, his lapdog. Come with me. Gabriel bypassed his mom, took my hand, and led me upstairs. Your performance on the mountain today was not bad. Gabriel changed into casual clothes and obediently held my hand. I wanted to break free, but he pulled me into his arms instead. As our breaths intertwined, his gaze gradually grew intense. A sudden phone ring interrupted the ambiguous atmosphere in the room. I unconsciously let out a sigh of relief. Gabriel casually opened the voice message, and a string of laughter came through. Gabriel, we've posted the video of Alvina Fisher going crazy on the mountain in the group chat. We even tagged your rival Vince Harvey to watch it. Wasn't there a rumor that he had a crush on Alvina back in high school? Now let him see how Alvina is acting like a sycophant towards you, it'll drive him crazy, ha ha ha. And also, Gabriel hurriedly turned off the phone and took out a box from behind, trying to change the subject. This is the engagement dress I prepared for you. I asked a friend to buy it for you overseas. Do you like it? I glanced at it indifferently and excused myself to the bathroom, where I opened my phone. On a certain platform, the video of me searching for Gabriel on the mountain had already become a trending topic in the local area. I didn't know which of Gabriel's good friends had uploaded it for him. The drone they used must have been expensive, as it captured my image quite clearly. I saw myself in the video, looking like a mentally deranged madwoman. The comment section was bustling with various jokes and ridicule. I thought to myself, I should have dressed up a bit, at least put on some waterproof makeup. When I came out, Gabriel was already gone. On the table, there was a bottle of iodine and some gauze. Ella called me at this moment. Has Gabriel came yet? I twisted my ankle, and he told me to wait for him here. While cleaning my wound, I replied. He should be on his way. Please remind him not to take too long, he has a meeting tomorrow. She sneered on the other end of the phone. You really are scheming. No wonder Gabriel says that about you. Don't you just want him to go back and be with you? So funny. I sighed. Is it really that funny? If I leave now, 
Would they feel like there's a lot less fun? I waited in the room all night, but Gabriel never came back. Apparently, he had forgotten that today was my birthday. He had also forgotten that he promised a week ago to spend the day with me. After submitting my resignation in the company system, I packed my few belongings and quietly left. Just as I reached the street corner, I ran into Gabriel being supported by Ella. Seeing me with a suitcase, Gabriel's slightly drunken face instantly changed. Ella tightened her hold on Gabriel's arm instead of letting go. Working so hard? Are you rushing off on a business trip early in the morning? No wonder people say you're a big shot in the Owen group now. I raised my eyebrows and smiled lightly, thanks for the compliment. Actually, she is a very excellent girl. Talented in singing and dancing, with good looks, a great figure, and a good family background. During the high school art performances, her performance in a white dress playing the piano almost made her the dream girl of all the boys in the school. Even I, in the audience, was attracted by her brilliance and sincerely admired her confident beauty. In my youth, I occasionally fantasized about being a talented, glamorous version of myself. Gracefully wearing exquisite, expensive dresses, receiving everyone's attention. But when I saw my sickly mother, this fantasy would end with guilt and self-blame. Ella's brilliance dimmed after meeting Gabriel. To have time to follow Gabriel around, she quit all clubs and after-school classes. When I became Gabriel's deskmate and got closer to him under his mother's instruction, Ella became more anxious. Originally polite and friendly to me, she became increasingly sharp. Oh, look at your leg. Why didn't you bandage it properly? Aren't you doing this on purpose to make Gabriel feel sorry for you? Gabriel seemed to sober up a bit, shook off Ella's hand, and walked up to me. Where are you going? Don't tell me you're throwing a tantrum or getting jealous again. Be good, you've always been the most obedient. Don't make a scene. His eyes were bloodshot, and there was still a hint of childishness in his angry face. I found it amusing. What a fake performance. Over the years, he had repeatedly used Ella and other women to make me jealous. The more unhappy and painful I felt, the more excited he became. Mr. Owen, I'm not making a scene. Hearing my address, his expression turned colder. Then what's with all the luggage? Trying to show off to me? He pressed down on my hand that was dragging the suitcase, intent on getting an explanation. I glanced at the car that had just stopped and got inside. My car is here. Bye. Gabriel seemed genuinely angry, banging on the car window. Don't go, explain yourself. He glared at the driver in the front seat, his eyes filled with a threatening look. Unfortunately, no matter how prestigious he was in high society, not everyone recognized his face. The driver glanced at him out of the corner of his eye and decisively started the car. Gabriel, who was clinging tightly to the car window, almost fell over in an embarrassing manner. Young lady, don't be afraid. I've seen many men like him. Even if they make a mistake, they act like they are in the right and turn the tables on you. Ignore him, he seems like he's got issues. The driver, who looked to be in his forties, warmly tried to comfort me. It's okay. Thank you. As soon as I got out of the car, Gabriel called me. After rejecting his calls a few times, my phone finally went silent. When I reached the company lobby, the security guard ran up to stop me. Miss Fisher. He looked troubled. Mr. Owen instructed, said, said you need to call him back and apologize before you can go in. The two receptionists who heard our conversation continued with their work, unfazed. I've been with Gabriel for a few years, and he's quite adept at these tactics. Last year, to welcome one of his childhood friends back to the country, he and a group of his friends partied at a club until dawn. Meanwhile, I was at home, hunched over my computer, working on his proposal until late at night. At three in the morning, he called me, drunkenly ordering. Alvina Fisher, my buddy rarely comes back to the country, hurry up and get over here. I calmly explained to him. I'm still working on the proposal, you know how important this is for you. Amidst the deafening music, I could hear his friends laughing. Oh, Gabriel, didn't you say your girlfriend is totally obedient? Yeah, Gabriel, don't tell me you were exaggerating. You said she loves you to death, guess that's not true, huh? It sounded like Gabriel pushed someone away and his tone grew impatient. 
Stop talking. I'll give you 10 minutes to put on makeup, 20 minutes to catch a cab, and I want to see you in half an hour. If you don't come, you'll face the consequences. Bye. I stared at my computer for a few seconds, but I didn't go. What a joke. He'd be happy if I went. But if I couldn't deliver the proposal tomorrow, it would be me getting scolded by his mom, not him. The next day, with dark circles under my eyes and the proposal in hand, I was stopped outside the company. Gabriel sat leisurely in the lobby, looking at me with a smug expression. No matter how much I pleaded, he wouldn't let me in. As the meeting time approached, Gabriel's mom called to hurry me up, scolding me harshly. It seemed I couldn't avoid the scolding. I nodded and apologized to him, but he still wasn't satisfied. Apologize to me in front of my friends tonight, and I'll let this go. I reluctantly agreed, and only then did he let me in. Now, being stopped at the company entrance again, I felt utterly speechless. Miss Fisher, you see. The security guard rubbed his hands, looking at me expectantly. I handed him my resignation letter. Then I won't go in. Please help me deliver this resignation letter to the front desk and pass it to the HR department. The security guard's eyes widened, and he stood there stunned. I stuffed the resignation letter into his hand and walked out the door. Behind me, I could still hear him reporting to Gabriel on the phone in a broken voice. Mr. Owen, Miss Fisher, she, she didn't go in, and she asked me to. After checking in at the hospital, I sat wearily in the waiting room and yawned. Writing the resignation letter was easy, but handing over all my ongoing projects was truly tedious, keeping me up almost until dawn. Normally, besides doing my own job, I also had to clean up Gabriel's messes. Even Gabriel's mom would hand me some tricky projects to handle. She would say it was for my own good. Alvina, I just wants to give you more experience. After all, to be the daughter-in-law of the Owen family, you need to have real skills. I would always explain helplessly. Mrs. Owen, you lent me such a large sum of money back then. I promised to work for the Owen family for seven years, not two. But Gabriel's mom would always interrupt me firmly. No need to explain, I understand. Who in the whole city wouldn't want to marry my outstanding son? I can see what you feel for Gabriel. Don't worry, as long as you are loyal to Gabriel, I won't break up a loving couple. Gabriel's father passed away early, and the Owen group was almost single-handedly developed by his mother. I know that Gabriel's mother agreeing to us being together doesn't mean she really likes me. It's just that she is strong-willed and domineering, and having been at the top of power for so long, she doesn't want a daughter-in-law from another wealthy family to come in and affect her position. Someone like me, without family background, but with decent education and abilities, is the best pawn for her. Moreover, she has always firmly believed that I am madly in love with Gabriel and would never leave him. But soon she will understand that she has really overestimated herself. Alvina? Are you feeling unwell? I looked up. I didn't expect to run into Vince Harvey here. He was wearing a white shirt with the sleeves rolled up, immediately attracting the attention of the people around him as he walked over. My gaze fell on the person behind him, who looked like the hospital director. The Harvey family's business is mainly related to healthcare, and almost all hospitals, big and small, at home and abroad, have partnerships with them. Are you here to discuss a project? Vince nodded and walked back to say a few words to the person behind him. Then he came over and sat next to me. I moved aside a bit. Where do you feel unwell? He asked again. I gently lifted my leg. It's nothing, I just accidentally fell. He looked over, understanding immediately. It was then that I remembered what Ella and the others mentioned last night about sending the video to the group chat. Since they specifically tagged Vince to see it, he must already know. I felt vaguely uneasy. I'm sorry. Vince suddenly apologized to me. Noticing my confusion, he started to explain. Is it still about that love letter from high school? Over the years, because of me, his archenemy, he has put you through many tests to prove your feelings for him, hasn't he? Love letter. My thoughts drifted back to the green days of high school. Vince Harvey and I were originally classmates. He was the math class representative, and I was the English class representative. 
I had just transferred to Gabriel's class not long before Vince also transferred in. Before this, Gabriel was the most dazzling and eye-catching student in the class. After Vince appeared, he undoubtedly took away half of Gabriel's spotlight. Gabriel was rebellious and sharp, daring to cause trouble without fear. Vince seemed deep but wouldn't tolerate everything silently. The two maintained a superficial harmony due to their family reputations. Until the love letter incident. When I was handing out assignments, Vince took his and casually opened it, only to find a love letter inside, a printed one at that. The surrounding students immediately gathered around in excitement. Vince glanced at me quickly and then tried to shove the letter into his drawer. But Ella, who was quick, had already snatched it and started reading it out loud, word by word. Life is dull, the people around are hard to deal with, but your appearance made me realize how important the resonance of souls is. Before she could finish, Gabriel kicked a chair away. This love letter wasn't written by me. I glanced faintly at Gabriel, who was exuding a cold aura. There were hisses all around. Such little gossip during student days could easily get people excited. Gabriel took a deep look at me and bypassed Ella to start fighting with Vince. That evening, I was called to the Owen family by Gabriel's mother. What's going on with you? Didn't I tell you to keep an eye on Gabriel? Now the entire capital is laughing at my Owen family and the Harvey family over Amir. Mom. Can you be reasonable? It's not her fault. Gabriel came downstairs, interrupting his mother's unfinished words. His mouth was swollen, and there was a band-aid on his forehead. As he stuffed me into the car, I handed him a test paper filled with explanations, but he knocked it away. You are not allowed to talk to that Harvey guy before graduation. Otherwise. He didn't finish. Otherwise, what? Stop my mother's medical expenses? I picked up the test paper and handed it to him again, nodding. Although the school didn't give any punishment or warning due to Gabriel and Vince's family backgrounds, the two became sworn enemies from then on. Alvina Fisher. The call from the hospital screen pulled me out of my memories. I stood up, and Vince stood up as well. It's none of your business, no need to apologize. Gabriel is just that kind of person. The slightest disturbance can turn him into a jealous person for no reason. Sometimes I wonder if he really likes me that much or if he just finds a different kind of contrast and possessiveness in me. I care about everything related to him, but I have never directly expressed my love. I am obedient and patient, but I often don't meet his expectations. Maybe, after seeing so many swans, an occasional peculiar little duck does seem novel and interesting. The doctor checked me and found no bone injuries. It's just that there are too many gravel and stones on the mountain, and I fell too many times, causing some abrasions and inflammation. After disinfecting the wound and getting the medicine, I saw Vince again at the hospital entrance. Haven't you finished your business yet? I greeted him briefly and wanted to leave, but he stopped me. Your leg is not convenient, let me give you a ride? I shook my phone, no need, I called a car. His eyebrows relaxed, and a smile appeared on his lips. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about the aborted cloud project in your hands. My heart stirred slightly. I had been researching the cloud system for a year, but Gabriel's mother didn't think highly of it. Without her support as the top leader, I couldn't get the manpower and funds to implement it. I had invested a lot of passion and effort into this project, it was proof of my ability and dream. Cooperate with me. In the cafe, I was still pondering over Vince's proposal for cooperation. Still oat milk? He asked softly. I paused for a moment. Yes, thank you. Since my mom got sick, I almost stopped drinking coffee. That time was too dark. Knowing it was a bottomless pit, knowing the hope was slim. But I couldn't let go. Others had no obligation to put in so much for medical expenses, but I couldn't do that. She was my mom. As long as she was still in this world, I was still a child with a mom. It felt like I still had roots here. In the face of my mom's life, everything else lost its meaning. To squeeze out the medical expenses, I was anxious. After Gabriel's mom lent me money, I was anxious about such a big favor. After my mom's surgery, I was anxious about postoperative complications and the high recurrence rate. Every day of insomnia became the most ordinary thing. 
Later, the psychologist told me that the recovery from anxiety might be a long and repetitive process. I already had trouble sleeping, so I didn't dare to drink coffee or tea anymore. Sorry, this might be a bit intrusive, but I found out through some channels that you resigned from the Owen group. I realized it. Gabriel loves to test. Vince loves to apologize. His information was fast enough that I even suspected there were spies from the Owen group arranged by him. Are you interested in collaborating with me? Actually, your cloud system is a better match for Harvey Group's medical-related projects. Gabriel's mother is indeed very capable, but she's also quite traditional. It's very difficult to promote many new concept projects under her. Vince's tone was sincere, just like the impression his appearance gave. He took out a document from behind him and pushed it towards me. Don't blame me for being impatient. But the news of your resignation has already caused a stir in that group. I'm afraid Gabriel will find you soon and persuade you to go back. That would really break my heart. He spoke lightly and without offense, with a hint of humor. Gabriel was the same age as him, but Vince was obviously much more mature. This was probably also due to the fact that his parents died early. I heard that after he graduated from university, he caused quite a stir to take back the top position in Harvey Group from his uncle. Such a person, no one would underestimate his abilities. But I just submitted my resignation this morning, and he already has a plan ready? I always felt he was hiding something. You flatter me too much. I took the plan and had just opened the first page when I heard the sound of a chair being knocked over behind me. Alvina. Gabriel stood in front of me, panting heavily. His bangs were damp with sweat, hanging messily over his eyes filled with anger. He glanced at Vince and sneered coldly. Taking advantage of the situation, huh? Vince looked at him, a mocking smile tugging at his lips. Gabriel Owen, did your brain stop developing at 17? Seeing the two of them about to clash again, I quickly stood up. Gabriel, whether you believe it or not, my decision has nothing to do with Vince. We just happened to meet and were discussing some matters. Gabriel stared at me seriously, as if analyzing the credibility of my words. Then he grabbed my hand, about to take me away. Vince stood up and blocked him. As a man, can you show some gentlemanly conduct? Gabriel pushed him aside and pulled me out. I stuffed the plan into my bag and hurriedly waved to Vince. Don't worry, I can handle it. As soon as I got in the car, I was greeted by the overwhelming scent of flowers. The back seat was covered with lilies of the valley. Gabriel's voice softened, I was a bit too much, I shouldn't have tested you like this. Can you stop using resignation to get back at me? Seeing that I didn't speak, he turned me to face him. If you don't want to live with my mom, we can move out together. I just bought a new villa. If you bring your ID, I can transfer the villa to your name. Then at night, we can have coffee on the terrace, enjoy the night view, and... His eyes were bright, as if already immersed in a beautiful future. I couldn't listen anymore and interrupted him. I'm not acting on impulse. I really want to resign and move out. Gabriel, we are impossible. There were moments of warmth and affection. In every moment he cared for me, I also had fleeting thoughts of maybe we can be together. But in our relationship, he always acted like a mischievous boy. He believed that only through dramatic ups and downs could true feelings be proven. He enjoyed it, but I was already tired. How can it be impossible? Aren't we the most compatible? Gabriel panicked. He unfastened his seatbelt and held me tightly in his arms. Before my mom passed away, Gabriel also came to the hospital. He brought very expensive supplements, the kind my mom had never had in her life. With a breathing tube in her mouth, my mom mumbled her thanks to him. You are so considerate. Thank, thank you. She never felt she deserved anything in her life. When my dad divorced her, she thought maybe she hadn't done well enough. When her achievements at work were taken by others, she felt it was her own incompetence and didn't blame anyone. Even when she got sick, she felt it was a sin. Don't treat me anymore, let me go. Mom owes you too much, just worried about you being alone. Her tears slid down her wrinkles to her ears. And I had already cried my voice hoarse, unable to speak. Gabriel leaned on me and promised my mom. 
Don't worry, no matter how much it costs, I will have someone cure you. Leave Alvina to me, don't worry. See, we are the most compatible. My mom couldn't speak, she just shook her head. Gabriel thought my mom meant she didn't want to be treated anymore. Actually, she was saying that the two of us weren't a good match. It wasn't just about family background. In my inferiority and arrogance, it took me seven years to calmly accept this fact. Be gentle, my elbow hurts a lot. Gabriel quickly let go of me, his eyes filled with unshakable guilt. I'll call the family doctor to check on you later. Do you know, yesterday when I saw you so anxiously looking for me on the mountain, I felt both heartache and joy. I finally confirmed how true your feelings for me are. His long eyelashes fell, adding a touch of gentleness to his sharply defined face. I promise, this is the last test. I meant no harm. My birthday is coming up, and I hope that day will be our engagement day. So, my actions were a bit childish. I listened patiently, like listening to my boss's last bit of nonsense before resigning. Are you done? Can I leave now? Gabriel was stunned. Suddenly, the car door opened. It was Gabriel's mom. What kind of attitude is that when you talk to Gabriel? Even if you are boyfriend and girlfriend, you should respect each other, right? She was dressed in an exquisite suit, followed by her secretary. Obviously, she had just rushed over from the company. Yes, Mrs. Owen, you also said, respect each other. I emphasized the words each other. She paused, then spoke irritably. I know everything, what happened yesterday, Gabriel was a bit impulsive. But isn't young love like this? Let Gabriel coax you properly, that's enough. He has always had his way in the capital, have you ever seen him lower himself to coax anyone? I'm his mother, I understand him, he truly cares about you. Gabriel's mom took out my resignation letter. I'll pretend I didn't see this, you can have today off, and be back to work tomorrow as usual. And the 600,000 you sent me, I've transferred it back to you. What 600,000? Gabriel turned to look at me. I got out of the car, took out my phone and transferred the money back. Back then you lent me 500,000, I was very grateful, I. Do you think returning the 500,000 means you owe me nothing? I invested that money and made a profit. Gabriel's mom snorted coldly. Mom. Gabriel got angry. For seven years since high school, I spent almost all my free time tutoring Gabriel and taking care of his daily needs. After graduating from college, I joined Owen Group as per my resume. My peers who joined at the same time all enjoyed stock dividends, but you privately altered my offer and cut my dividends. I personally think all of this combined should cover the interest. If you think it's not enough, I'll transfer another interest payment to you by the end of this year. Of course, I will always remember and be grateful for your kindness, and if Owen Group needs my help in the future, I will do my best to assist. Gabriel grabbed my arm, shouting out of control, What are you talking about? You don't need to repay anything. I just want you to stay with me forever, forever. Gabriel's mom threw the resignation letter on the ground in anger. In any case, I do not approve your resignation. The company has faced several crises in the past two years, and I have racked my brains to solve them. Gabriel loves to play and usually only considers his own wishes, it's not the right time for him to take charge alone. With me around, he can at least listen to a few more words. Of course, many times I also have to pay a price to get him to restrain himself. You can call me selfish or an ungrateful wretch. In my view, repaying kindness should have a limit. Even if I'm despised, I accept it. Resignation only requires an application, I've detailed all the handover matters. Since I'm resigning urgently, you don't need to pay me this month's salary. In the evening, I went to the bar and ordered a bottle of wine. Before I left, Gabriel stopped me, his eyes red. Can you give me another chance? He was clearly smiling, but he looked like he was about to break. I don't want to see you right now. Can you respect that? Gabriel's hand fell, his voice very gentle, all right, I'll come find you when you've calmed down. Hearing him say that made my heart sink. It seemed like even parting with him peacefully was difficult. I didn't drink before, and Ella used to mock me for being unsophisticated and old-fashioned. 
She said that wine could help people forget their troubles, and the more expensive the wine, the better it worked. Maybe the wine I ordered was too cheap? Otherwise, why did I still feel so sad after drinking glass after glass? In my memories, that boy who shone like a dream sometimes had a sullen face but always liked to stick to me. On a hot afternoon, I held a pen and explained math problems to him. He lay on the desk, his fingers twirling my hair, his gaze so intense I dared not look at him. Alvina, I promise to be a bit more obedient, and then… After graduation, can we try really being together? After a long time, I heard my own mosquito-like voice, okay. In the following years, the words he said to me most often were, Do you like me? Really? Do you really love me? Are you lying to me? Through one test after another, my little bit of courage gradually faded away. I was too greedy. I accepted my loss. In a daze, it seemed someone came over to hit on me. TSK, he looked too sleazy, I had to scare him away. Then another person came over. This person looked so familiar. Vince Harvey? When I woke up, my head was splitting. A strange woman on the sofa heard the noise and made a phone call. My mind was a mess. This place is a hotel? I had never drunk wine before, and I didn't expect my first time to end so disastrously. At this moment, I couldn't help but feel a little scared. And I secretly vowed never to be so careless again. Miss Fisher, you got drunk last night. Mr. Harvey didn't know where you live now, so he got a room for you at the hotel. I quickly got up and found that my clothes were still intact. As if afraid I'd feel embarrassed, she explained further. Mr. Harvey stayed in the suite next door. I was here all night. I coughed twice. Thank you, thank you so much. After tidying up, Vince was already waiting at the door. I thanked him again and offered to transfer the room fee to him. No need, really. In the process of refusing, I accidentally knocked his phone to the ground. Fortunately, there was a carpet, so the phone didn't get damaged. Otherwise, it would have been even more awkward. I picked up the phone and handed it to him, inadvertently catching a glimpse of his phone wallpaper. It was a photo of that high school love letter. I couldn't hide the shock in my eyes. Now it was his turn to feel awkward. Ahem, well, I just thought. He thought for a long time but didn't come up with anything. I suddenly had the urge to laugh. Vince. Hmm? I really didn't write that love letter. His gaze fell on my face. I know. Sometimes, lying to myself is also kind of nice. I put away my smile, hearing the meaning behind his words. Last month, I went to a hospital, and during a chat with the director, I heard about your mother's situation. That cleared up a lot of doubts in my mind. I. My mind was in turmoil, and I instinctively interrupted him. How about we talk about the details of the proposal instead? His ears turned red, and he seemed a bit embarrassed. Okay. Anyway, I believe we have plenty of time. In the meeting room, Vince and I had a pleasant discussion. He is a pragmatic person, very serious when it comes to work, and doesn't mix in too many personal emotions. Regarding the project arrangement, he gave me the greatest degree of freedom. In the end, we decided that I would collaborate with Harvey Group as an independent entity. This is the form you prefer, right? I nodded. He added, as if seeking credit, I thought hard to come up with this. The following week, our project progressed very smoothly. Apart from business matters, I hardly had to worry about any other trivial details. I couldn't help but marvel at how he managed to successfully seize power from the old fox of his uncle. In the past few years, I had been busy running around for the Owen group, and because I had to consider Gabriel. I didn't want to stir up more trouble, so I rarely had contact with Vince. It was only recently that I started to get familiar with his past bit by bit from his own mouth. The good mood from my successful work didn't last long before it was completely ruined by a trending topic. Hashtag Harvey Group President and Long-Haired Beauty. Hashtag Vince Harvey with a hostess. Hashtag Owen Group Female Executive 2 Timing. Hashtag Female Executive Cheating. When I clicked on it, there were pictures of me and Vince walking out of a hotel in the morning. Some photos were taken from very tricky angles, making it look like I was kissing him. 
There were even more disgusting tags that I didn't bother to open. Sorry, I'll handle it, don't let it affect your mood. Just after hanging up Vince's call, Ella called in. Alvina Fisher, you're really something. Dump one and hook up with another right away? Who do you think you are? What gives you the right to torment Gabriel? Hasn't he been loyal to only you all these years? Isn't that enough? She ranted at me for quite a while. Those reporters were arranged by you, weren't they? There was silence on the other end for a few seconds. What nonsense are you talking about? She was still being stubborn. And the trending topic, you bought it, right? You used to love this trick back in high school, didn't you? She sneered, finally dropping the act. So what if I did? If you dare to do it, don't you dare let people talk about it? Do you know what people say about you behind your back? Imagining the smug look on her face, I spoke calmly. I don't care what they say because they don't matter to me at all. After hanging up the phone, I took the rushed proposal to the Harvey Group building. To my misfortune, I arrived just in time to see Vince surrounded by reporters in a chaotic scene. Alvina Fisher? Is that Alvina Fisher? A woman from a poor background, willing to do anything to climb up. Those rich families aren't stupid, they're just playing around. I glanced at the microphones in their hands. Sure enough, they were from the entertainment company under Ella's family. In the blink of an eye, I was surrounded by a swarm of them blocking my way. Someone was maliciously questioning Vince. Mr. Harvey, are you angry that your reputation has been damaged by such a woman? It's said that Miss Fisher has been with Mr. Owen for seven years, don't you mind? Don't you need to test her loyalty? Vince's face looked grim and his imposing presence gradually silenced the surrounding voices. He walked over to me unhurriedly, his expression calm. I appreciate Miss Fisher's character and abilities, and we already have an intention to get engaged. Is it immoral for me and my fiancé to go to a hotel to rest? Assistant Burton. A man in a suit a few steps away responded and came over. Not a single reporter present today should be missed, sue them for infringing on my and Miss Fisher's right to reputation. We will not accept any settlement. All the reporters around were dumbfounded. Mr. Harvey. Sorry, it's our fault. Please be lenient, don't hold it against us, we're just doing our job. Vince ignored them and made a phone call. Soon, a dozen security guards came out and gave these people a good lesson. After walking a few steps, I stopped. He seemed not to have noticed that he had been holding my hand the whole time. This time it's my fault, I was the one who took you to the hotel that night. So it's right for me to take responsibility. Before transferring classes in high school, he and I often communicated because of our studies. At that time, my mother hadn't fallen ill yet, and occasionally I would chat and joke with him. After working with him for a while, I seemed to have found a bit of the familiar feeling from the past. Mr. Harvey is so responsible, then hurry up and make our engagement invitations, I'll burn one for my mom. I joked with him. Vince's grip tightened. Okay, I'll instruct Burton to do it. I was just kidding. I'm serious. I gently pulled my hand out. Trending topics update quickly, the engagement you mentioned to help me out, they will forget it soon. Anyway, thank you. Vince's thin lips pressed together, a trace of disappointment flashed across his face. Every time you say thank you, I feel like you're slapping me in the face. Really? Then you must be pretty tough, seems like you have thick skin. Working with Vince during this period, I felt an unprecedented sense of ease. No need to bear debts, no need to be cautious about upsetting anyone. Just follow my heart, that's enough. Gabriel called me countless times, sent many messages. I didn't answer, didn't reply. Later, I simply blocked him. The scars on my legs and arms have faded a lot. But some wounds can never heal. Alvina, I'm sorry, can you come see me? I want to apologize to you in person. I was very surprised when I suddenly received a call from Ella. Her voice was choked with sobs, full of guilt. Did she seem drunk? Thinking of my dangerous experience at the bar last time, I drove over. Following the directions she gave, I found the place more and more familiar. At the entrance of the amusement park, Gabriel was holding a bouquet of flowers. 
When he saw me appear, he showed a pitiful smile. Ella did not lie to me about one thing. She was indeed crying. And she was genuinely apologizing to me. Sorry, Alvina, I shouldn't have directed the reporters to trouble you. She was apologizing to me, but her eyes were on Gabriel. It was the first time I had seen her cry so hard. The once radiant rose under the spotlight was now wilted on the ground, stripped of all its pride. After some time apart, Gabriel in front of me felt somewhat unfamiliar. He was wearing the sweatshirt I had given him when I received my first paycheck. I had never seen him wear it before. This sweatshirt is so tacky and cheap. If you can't afford something expensive, just tell me, I'll give you money. When he accepted the sweatshirt in front of everyone, his eyes clearly showed joy. But his words stabbed into my heart like a knife. He seemed like a child extremely lacking in security, afraid that if he loved too much, he would be at a disadvantage. He had to make me feel a bit humiliated to feel secure staying by my side. Alvina, look, the first birthday we spent together was in this amusement park. Now I've bought it, named it after you, to accompany us for a lifetime, okay? Gabriel's voice was hoarse, who knows how much he had been drinking lately. I looked up at the amusement park gate. Alvina's amusement park. Come back with me, okay? I won't let anyone bully you again, including Ella. Gabriel's cold gaze swept over Ella, who was still sobbing and immediately shrank back. I don't like Ella, I admit. I bypassed Gabriel and took a pack of tissues from my pocket, placing it in Ella's hand. But Ella doesn't owe you anything. You don't like her, yet you repeatedly use her to test me. You say you like me, but you trample my dignity underfoot time and again to test my sincerity. Gabriel's face turned pale, and he shook his head mechanically. I looked directly into his tear-filled eyes. Gabriel, your love is too shallow and too disgraceful. During your countless tests, I already stopped liking you, not even a bit. Tears finally fell from Gabriel's eyes. Then teach me, teach me how to love, there's still time. You've been with me for seven years, I don't believe you have no feelings left for me at all, I. Do you know? When your mother lent me half a million dollars back then, she asked me to serve you and the Owen group wholeheartedly for seven years. As soon as I finished speaking, the flowers in Gabriel's hand fell to the ground. Impossible, you're lying to me, lying again. You've been with me for seven years, everyone in the capital knows you're mine, no one dares to have thoughts about you, you. His brows furrowed tightly, and the anger in his eyes was about to erupt. Yes, that was more like him. I didn't want to hear any more harsh words. So I opened my bag and handed him an engagement invitation, with my name and Vince's on it. Gabriel hesitated, then slowly opened it. Then he tore the invitation into pieces, his voice trembling, don't joke with me, okay? It should be me you're engaged to. I took out a second invitation and handed it over, sorry, you didn't pass my test. And in the future, don't try to contact me again. I'm afraid my fiancé will get angry. Half a month later, I booked a flight to go abroad to complete some project work. Vince came to see me off. When did you slip so many engagement invitations into my bag? I really wanted to laugh when I thought about it. Vince spoke with a straight face. This is a new psychological suggestion I learned. They say it's very effective. So, when are you going to send them to your friends? I took a light sip of coffee. I already sent one to Gabriel. Really? Vince's shout almost made me spit out my coffee. Seeing me look at him doubtfully, he tried hard to suppress the smile that he couldn't hide. Well, he should get one. After all, we were classmates. I glared at him, you were the one who told the reporters about the engagement. I never admitted it. But you didn't deny it either. Vince, for now, I just want to live seriously and freely. I looked at him steadily. The smile in his eyes didn't fade. I fully support you. I can wait. Just as I finished my coffee, my phone rang. It was Gabriel's mother. Alvina. I'm begging you, please go back to Gabriel. He's been getting drunk every day because of you. Last night, he got into a car accident and broke a leg. He's still in the hospital. I realized my heart was really hard. 
The first thing I thought was, people who drink and drive have no sense of public responsibility. Could you come to the hospital to see him? He loves you so much. Gabriel's mother was crying on the other end, making me feel bad too. But I didn't want to give Gabriel any false hope. I didn't want to face him again, explaining things over and over that he wouldn't listen to. What's the point of seeing him again? Better to stay away from each other and let those painful memories gradually fade. Sorry, Mrs. Owen, I'm already boarding. I can't go back. I'll check on him via phone. After all, we were classmates. Take care of yourself and Gabriel. Goodbye. Vince helped me push my suitcase. Are you really not going? I shook my head. After thinking for a moment, I took Gabriel's number off the blacklist and sent him a message. I forgive you, but we can never be together. Next time you like someone, don't always test and bully her. Take care, all the best. After sending the message, I put his number back on the blacklist. After a brief goodbye to Vince, I boarded the plane. Just as I found my seat and was about to sit down, I heard someone calling me from behind. That voice. Vince's eyes were bright like water, and he had a smile on his face. Did you forget something? What? He looked around and leaned close to my ear. Me. I looked out the window. Blue sky, white clouds, clear and lovely. It was a good day.